Hey, g'day, it's Presser here back in the shop on a stinking hot summer day and what perfect weather to be doing some welding. You know, getting dressed up in leather coats and gloves and long sleeves and a welding face shield. Yep, I'm just dying, sweating at the moment. I think this is episode two of building this little arch footbridge. This project got started because a friend of mine gave me two pieces of rolled steel tube which were left over from another job and I figured it would make the perfect foundation for a small garden footbridge. And this is my sort of uh, homage, if you like, to Victorian engineering, the sort of thing that we would have seen toward the end of the 1800s. And uh, I've tried to replicate the sort of structural elements that you see on a, a hot riveted steel structure. And these little webs in the centre here are meant to replicate that style of engineering. And I don't have hot rivets, so it's not going to be identical, but uh, it's going to have that look about it. Let's take a look at where I'm at at the moment and where we're going. Well, I just removed all of the temporary bracing and clamps, and it's just sitting there at the moment uh, with these two outer saw horses taking the weight. And uh, I sort of half expect it to spring all over the place when I removed all of those clamps, but it's kept its shape pretty well. And uh, what I'll do next, I've got to get these um, gussets put in the centre of the diagonal braces. And uh, when that's done, I can turn the whole thing over and finish off the welding. This is just a mock-up of the, the gusset that I'll be using for the centre section of the bridge and this is just made from some plywood and I'll be using this as a template for the plasma cutter eventually. And I can't use it directly because I've got to offset um, a distance for the width of the plasma cutting torch. So uh, when I get round to that, I'll have to change the shape of this. This is just a, a direct mock-up of what the steel part's going to look like. So I'll show you how I did the one for the other bay. So this plywood's oversized and I'm just going to that in there just get it roughly in the right place and then trace off the edge of that brace. And we'll do that top and bottom. Sort of get underneath, do that there. And I'm just going to put a, a reference mark on this. because this one is not going to be symmetrical. I can't turn it around, it's not going to work. So that's going to allow me to put that back in the right place later. So I've got my marks there, and I've got marks on the other side. So I've just got to transfer the marks on the back to the front so I can work out the rest of the geometry. All right, so I'm going to mark out this bit of plywood here, and this is my welding bench, but check this out. I got this in the mail this morning and it's called an LED high bay light and this one is 300 watts and uh, man what a difference it makes <laughs> I can actually see what I'm doing now I'll turn this on but it's probably going to kill the camera here we go and boy that's bright it's fantastic it's like a hundred dollars shipped to my door and uh, it's fantastic. It's got a little fan in it, I don't know if you can hear it, but this little tiny cooling fan up top and I'm going to mount this on a like an arm so I can swing it backwards and forwards and I'll make it roll on the arm as well so I can shift it over a quite a large area to put light where I want it. It's like having a miniature sun. So what I'm going to do is get these marks on the back around the front. So I'm just going to um, transfer that mark across that edge and do the same there. And my steel is 25 millimeters wide. And so is my steel rule, so I can just use that to get my offset. So there's my 
lines now. And what I need to do is find the center. So I've got that, and now I can do an offset either side of center. And that's going to let me work out where my corner points are. So the, I'll put the corner points in. So I'm just measuring out half 25. That light's a bit too bright, I think. It's just a little bit glary. That's better. Okay, now what I need to do is get um, yeah, get some corner points uh, on these diagonals, the center diagonals, and then I can work out my radii. So with the other plate that I made, it's 175 millimeters wide uh, to these corner diagonals here. So if I offset that at um, half 175, you get a mark there, another one there. 175, actually you already put that mark in there and there. So theoretically they're my corner points. And uh, what I need to do now is put a, a 90 degree or right angle across from this diagonal. And I've got a piece of acrylic here with a, a line scribed on it at 90 degrees to that edge. And I can just put that in my center line. and mark off those corners. Now this template is going to look weird. It's not symmetrical because of the geometry of that outer panel. It's a little bit harder to do. Okay, so there are my four corner points and I need to put a like a radius in here now. So, I'm just going to do my highly technical template. So there are my two outer radii, and I've got to get two more in here now. Okay, this is the nearest thing I could find. This is the big faceplate of my Colchester lathe. At least I know it's accurate. Yeah, I know it looks crooked, and it is. It's got to be crooked. So I cut this out on the band saw, and we'll see how that one fits. I just cut that out and just lightly sanded that to bring it back to the marks. And I've marked, which is the long diagonal on this uh, set of braces. And that seems to fit okay. So what we need to do now is get these corners cut off with the plasma torch and then we're going to alter the shape of this template. I also need to mark out and drill some holes for the the fake rivets and that will make sure that uh, I get my spacings correct. So I'll get that done and then we'll have a look at the plasma cutting. So I've drilled all my fake rivet positions in the corners of the bracket and I'm just going to drill, I think I'll drill about two just to hold this together while I plasma cut it. Okay, so now we can work out where these corners need to go and get them cut first and then we'll do the radii. What I'll do now is just mark out these corners. So 
we can cut these with the plasma and then I'll use the rest of the template to cut out the curves. So I'm just going to use my template here to get these four corners off and then we can cut the curves. Now, I just went next door and I cut four and a half millimeters off the edge of my template because that is the offset that I need for my plasma torch nozzle. So I'm going to do the same trick that I did before when I was cutting out the, the ends of those ears. So the, the copper nozzle here is going to run against this edge and provided I keep that in contact all the way around there that should give me the correct profile. And I can get two from one piece of steel and I've got about four of these pieces of steel maybe five so I should have enough and I've marked these out but I won't cut these yet anyway let's see if we can get this one done something oddly satisfying about plasma cutting. It's so quick and the finish you know on the edge is very good as well. So it's almost zero cleanup you need to do. But there you go. So there it is in place. I uh, still need to drill the rest of my holes and transfer those through to the, the braces themselves and I'll give the edge a bit of a grind up. But yeah I'm happy with that. That's good. That's the second one. Need to get that cleaned up, drill all the holes. Oh, this is turning out to be a lot more time consuming than I thought. I've drilled all eight holes in this center gusset and I have to spot through uh, the holes in the gusset onto the diagonal brace and then finish drilling these on the drill press. It's just too flexible to be able to get any pressure on the drill bit. So this one's got four bolts through now and I've got to turn it over and do the other holes on the other side. And here's one ready to go. So I just uh, had this one already pre-drilled with all eight holes. I've got it clamped and lined up. So I'll spot these through and the other thing I need to do before I turn this over is to finish cutting these ends of the posts or the stanchions. So I'll use the angle grinder to cut through most of this and then when I turn it over I can get to the other side. This one here is already partly done and uh, you can see this section here is still got to come off. Put these marks on here just to keep track of where everything goes. Almost none of these parts are going to be interchangeable. Now if we mass produce, yep, they would be, but not like this. So there are my spots and I'll go and drill this on the drill press, put it back, and then we can bolt it up and get it turned over. Uh, 
Now these holes here now have to be drilled out 11 millimeters to keep the square on the back of the cup head bolt. Okay, so you see that's all a bit loose, but when I turn this over, I can drill through from the other side, get all those fixed. I just turned this over and it's a lot lighter than I thought actually but um, what I'm going to do now is drill all these plates through from the back onto these diagonal braces, get them drilled out and get everything bolted together and then I can go ahead and finish the, the welding on this side. I'll get that done and then we're going to make some plates uh, for the tops of the posts, I'll show you those in a minute. When you're doing this, and I don't want to be sounding like if you're watching this you don't know what you're doing, but uh, when I was teaching this to students I always said tilt the punch to one side and you look down and you can see the point. With a centre punch uh, the point is quite blunt so it's not always easy to see where that is but if you tip it to one side you can see it quite clearly and then stand it upright and give the punch one little tap followed by a harder blow and <clears throat> the idea is that it just seats the point into the steel and stops it skipping sideways so um, you know, the accuracy of your drilled hole is only as good as your marking out and your center punch mark so that's, uh, what do you call that, that's a double tap When these are welded onto those stanchions, I want to be able to hold from underneath with one of these little uh, hex head screws. These are wood screws, and they're going to bind into the timber for the handrail and pull it down hard against these plates. So these are good because they've got plenty of holding power, you get plenty of torque because you've got a hex head, and uh, they're self drilling, so they'll create their own hole, although. I don't want to split this handrail so I may pilot drill for these screws later. So 5.5 is a clearance for that screw so I'll get all these plates drilled and get them tacked on. these brackets just held on with a magnetic clamp now so I'll just go ahead and tack these. So get ready for some more comedy welding.
so bad I'm going to have to edit it all out. <laughs> God, this is embarrassing. Let's try a vertical up and let's burn a hole! That's probably the best looking one I've done. For better or worse there, all done. Nothing a grinder can't fix, I guess. So, I'll tidy this up now and then we'll do a bit of a summary and then we're going to call it quits with this video. Well, oh, it's stinking hot at the moment. I'm just sweating to death, so I'm going to sort of call it quits here. Uh, so I've got everything welded together on this frame. And when I say welded, I mean fused together in a sort of an arbitrary fashion. I'm not going to show you any close-ups of any welds because quite honestly they're really embarrassing. But it's holding together and that's the, the main thing. And uh, I think coat, uh, coat of paint's going to hide a lot of the, uh, <laughs> the really rubbish welds. Um, here's a bit of a preview of what's happening with the handrails. So this is a piece of um, spotted gum which is a really, really hard Australian hardwood. And uh, it's flexing around there quite well. I didn't think it would actually. Uh, so I'm going to build the handrail out of two thicknesses of some sort of good quality hardwood and it'll be held together with epoxy resin boat building glue screwed up underneath with four uh, hex head screws on each one of those brackets and when the epoxy is set it should have sort of hold it in that shape. It will need to have a pretty good quality coating on it as well to uh, withstand the UV light which is what breaks down most of the uh, coatings that we use on the outside. So um, I'm going to finish this video up here now because I've got a feeling it's sort of getting on a bit long. I can't tell for sure because my computer went away at the service and I normally edit this stuff as I go so I get a rough idea of how long the video is going to be but I can't do that so I'm just sort of guessing that we've finished the end of this phase. In the next video we're going to have the second frame done. Now what I'll do is I'll clamp the second frame as loose pieces to this one and get it tacked together and then at least the two frames are going to be the same even if they're wrong if you know what I mean. And uh, when that's done we'll uh, put the cross beams on to join the two halves together to make a single bridge and then we'll look at the decking and we're going to look at the handrail. So that's in the video coming up. So. Um, Oh, look, it's been fun to this stage. The, the weather's not the best for doing this sort of thing. And when I started this video, I did tell you that uh, we were in a, uh, an extremely dry period here where I live. Since then, North Queensland, and particularly Townsville, has had nearly two metres of rain in about two weeks. Right? That's two metres, not two inches, two metres. And Tasmania's had devastating bushfires and here we've had this very long, hot, dry spell, but it, we did get some rain in the last couple of days, but not enough to fill up the dam. So, um, I'm going to finish up here, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it so far. Catch you on the next video, and thanks for watching. Oh, that was exciting. Oh, my wrist. No, I'm not going to get that.
can work out where all the lugs go for the diagonal bracing, get the diagonal bracing cut to length, and that's probably the most important thing. On here's Rack the Cat coming to supervise and get in the way. <laughs> that's good. I'll grind it up and no one will know. God, that's awful. And that one is a vertical down. What? Stop laughing. I said I wasn't a welder. And let's face it, when you grind them off, who'd know? I should have known that was going to happen. Ah!